Hello, uh, I'm Kim Young Yulia Yoon from a uh, PhD student from Brown University, uh, and I'm going to present uh, our study about the association between discontinuity of care from clinicians and outcomes among nursing home residents. First, I want to acknowledge uh, my co authors and my mentors, uh, Dr. Mark Unru and Dr. Heyoung Arian Chung from Well Cornell Medicine, Cornell University, who are also here with us. So this is the background and the motivation of this study. Uh, physicians and advanced practitioners, uh, including nurse practitioners and physician assistant, they play a key role in the quality of care for nursing home residents who are medically complex and require highly coordinated care. Uh, nursing home residents, they often experience disruptions in care leading to the receipt of care from different multiple clinicians. Uh, for example, once they are admitted to nursing homes, uh, residents may keep their primary care uh, providers in their community, or they may be assigned to a different new attending clinicians who are working in that nursing home. Then, uh, in other settings other than nursing homes, uh, discontinuity of care from clinicians has been associated with worse outcomes among patients. For example, uh, increased risk of hospitalizations or increased ED visit rate among patients, community dwelling patients in the outpatient care setting, uh, or uh, worse health outcomes among patients in the inpatient care setting. Then how about in nursing homes? Unlike uh, relatively rich evidence in other settings and uh, despite the related concerns, um, there is limited research uh, on defining and measuring the discontinuity of care provided to nursing and residents by clinicians. Also, little is known about the impact of the discontinuity of care provided to nursing home residents. So, our study aimed to examine uh, the association between the discontinuity of care provided to nursing home residents uh, by physicians and advanced practitioners, including nurse practitioners and physician assistant, and uh, quality outcomes among nursing home residents. We also examined uh, whether there is an association between the discontinuity of care uh, provided to nursing home residents and total health care costs. So now let me uh, explain the methods. So we used a national 20% random sample of Medicare fee-for-service beneficiaries uh, who became long-stay residents uh, for the period between 2012 and 2019. Uh, we used uh, Medicare claims data and other types of claims data and uh, Medicare enrollment file, clinician and facility level data sets as listed here. Our target population uh, were Medicare fee-for-service beneficiaries who became uh, aged 65 or older, who became long-stay residents. Uh, and long-stay nursing home residents were those who were staying in the same facility for 100 days or longer uh, without 10 consecutive days outside the facility. We limited our target population to those who were continuously enrolled in Medicare Part A and B uh, we excluded residents who are residing in the hospital-based nursing homes uh, because the uh, characteristics or practice patterns are different from other general uh, freestanding nursing homes. Uh, we also excluded uh, residents uh, with records less than two calendar years because they didn't have a chance to experience the discontinuity of care, which was expressed as a change in the attributed clinician in this study. Uh, based on our attribution logic for uh, residents to the clinicians, which I'm going to explain in a minute. So these remaining residents were attributed to the clinicians, um, and clinicians were uh, limited to the physicians, nurse practitioners, and physician assistant, and physicians were those uh, either were generalists, including general medicine, internal medicine, family medicine, uh, or uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation doctors or geriatricians, based on the fact that these are the five most common specialties among uh, physicians whose practice was uh, concentrated in nursing home services. We also limited our clinicians to those who had at least 20 claims. So 
Residents were attributed to clinicians based on the number of evaluation and management claims in nursing homes in a given year. Um, and in, term, in the case of a tie, in terms of the number of ENM claims, uh, we used a random determination. So determinant of interest was a discontinuity of care, and so we created a binary indicator reflecting whether there was a change in the attributed primary clinician from the first year to the second year uh, of residence stay. And this was the reason why we had to exclude the residents who had uh, less than two calendar years records. Um, the outcome measures included ambulatory care sensitive hospitalization and ED visits um, because these events are common uh, among nursing home residents and they're largely preventable uh, with appropriate ambulatory care. Uh, we also looked at the total quality healthcare costs and healthcare costs were uh, Medicare expenditures including outpatient, uh, inpatient and professional and other types of services. We also included a rich set of covariates, including the residents' uh, demographic characteristics uh, or their Medicare status indicators such as dual eligibility or uh, entitlement due to disability. We also included their uh, health status indicators uh, such as baseline antipsychotic use or ADL scores, cognitive function scales, in addition to 65 chronic conditions. We also included uh, clinician level characteristics or uh, facility level characteristics as listed here. So for the analysis, we restricted our analytic sample to the first two years of resident stay to isolate the influence of the length of stay uh, from the likelihood of experiencing the discontinuity of care, uh, which was expressed as a change in the attributed clinician, and also from the resident's health status. And uh, so we made an adjusted comparison using the linear regression model with nursing home and year quarter fixed effects. The comparison group uh, included residents uh, in the same facility who did not experience the uh, attributed clinician change. Standard errors were adjusted for clustering at the nursing home level, and we also conducted four types of sensitivities checks. Uh, first, we excluded uh, the smallest 20% nursing homes based on the number of beds, because uh, these facilities have fewer number of clinicians and the residents in that, those uh, facilities are less likely to experience the provider change. We also limited our uh, sample to those with the low baseline ADL scores or high baseline ADL uh, baseline scores. Uh, we also uh, did a sensitivity check using the composite outcome of ACS hospitalization and death to account for the competing risk of death. We also looked at the uh, baseline characteristics. So. Here are the results. So our final sample included 280,831 nursing home long stay residents. And uh, the baseline characteristics were identified by a provider change group versus no provider change group uh, by looking at the first year quarter records of those residents. And as you can see, demographic characteristics were similar between those two groups. Uh, p-values are mostly significant due to large sample size, uh, but the differences are clinically not meaningful. And uh, there isn't much differences between the two groups for the chronic conditions, uh, except for the small difference for the depressive disorder. Residents in the provider change group uh, were less likely to have MDs as their uh, primary clin attributed clinicians at the baseline. Um, uh, and then those residents were more likely to reside in the nursing homes which were for profit or were part of a multi-facility multi chain. And uh, these are the results from our main analysis. Uh, so, uh, residents who experienced the attributed clinician change in the second year uh, were 14.2% more likely to experience ACS hospitalizations, and they were 11.5% more likely to experience ED visits related to ACS conditions, and they also uh, showed a higher 
uh, total quarterly healthcare costs by $609 compared to those who didn't experience uh, their provider change in the second year. And uh, the results from the sensitivity analysis were largely consistent with these, uh, with those from the main analysis, except for the one uh, that we used the composite outcome of ACS hospitalizations and death, uh, which was statistically not significant. So we found that uh, discontinuity in clinician care or in nursing home residents were associated with an increased risk of hospital ACS hospitalizations and increased risk of ACS ED visits, and also in, in addition, 8% uh, higher total health care costs. So discontinuity in clinician care uh, may lead to worse outcomes among nursing home residents through several mechanisms. For example, there can be clinicians' lack of familiarity with uh, the patient, or there can be uh, disruptions in the flow of clinical information about the resident. Uh, and the distinct uh, fact of, the, of this study is that it avoided the influence of the length of stay by identifying uh, the provider change in the next year instead of calculating the proportions of the encounters with the consistent uh, providers throughout the resident's stay. But this study has several limitations. Uh, first, causal inference cannot be made with these uh, estimates because we looked at them cross-sectionally. And also, we only looked at the first change um, in the clinical uh, clinician care, uh, but there can be multiple changes if we looked at a uh, like longer period. We also did not uh, examine uh, variability in the timing of changes in clinician care, but for example, uh, if residents' uh, clinician changes at the beginning of the second year, that's more likely to affect the, the outcomes uh, than the change in changing the clinician at the end of the second year. So um, discontinuity in clinician care uh, may lead to worse outcomes for nursing home residents uh, and uh, with more um, evidence from the related uh, research, including ours, uh, CMS may consider including um, the continuity of clinician care as a measure of uh, nursing home quality measures. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude my presentation and um, I have concluded appendix for the results for the sensitivity checks uh, and I, I'm also happy to share any related references uh, for anyone who wants to. Thank you for your attention. So thank you so much to our panelists and to our audience for um, being here to hear the presentation today. So I would like to, I invite you to come to the mic to share questions that you may have, but I would like to start by asking our panelists to just comment uh, from your perspective what are some of the implementation challenges that exist to, or is it changing uh, patient center outcomes in, in the areas that you've been studying? I guess with a specific interest in um, equity concerns